you know, I keep abreast of things that are going on. I mean, I hear things, and obviously there's shit that's out there, but I don't really... You'll find out it, this is maybe something you've never experienced, but you get sick enough, and you just kind of not care anymore about a majority of things. It really just kind of rolls off you like water off a duck's ass. You just kind of don't give a shit. It's a fantastic feeling in a way. You're kind of willowed and hollowed out, and you could sit there and stare in the abyss, or you can roll with it. Shouldn't let it keep you down. Gotta keep going. You need that Goku get him attitude. <laughs> oh, what a fucking age we're living in. A digital dungeon. A cyber panopticon. You know, there are things I can't even say anymore. None of us can. It started with words. Certain no-no phrases and words that you couldn't say, and so we had to be smart about it and work our way around it with euphemisms and memes and jokes and substitutions to find a way to express what we meant to say because we can't say those no-no words anymore. But it morphed. It went beyond that. It started to change, didn't it? Now it's not just words that you can't say. It's ideas or concepts that you can't even express anymore. We're being hemmed in, hawed in, <laughs> wrangled, if you were. And what do we do about it? It's not much. Social media really has worked hand in hand with the government to sort of corral us and strip us of our ability to even talk about things. Step out of line and you're deplatformed, demonetized, depersoned. No more bank account for you. No more hosting platform for you. No more servers for you. No more DDoS protection for you. I mean, there's only so much you can build with your own hands. It's one thing to say, use a different website. Build your own service, get your own servers, buy the hardware, run the company, build your own bank. But at this point, we're getting to the, uh, the uh, uh, era where we're going to need to run our own country to be able to say what the hell we think. I'm going to have to move to, like, Tonga or something, just to crack a few jokes that might offend people. And it's so bizarre. And you can kind of feel it. It's that intangible thing, isn't it? It's almost ethereal. It tickles the back of your spine, that, that little bit of despair, doesn't it? as you can kind of slowly see the world going crazy around you as people give in to this. What else can they do? Pushed more and more from being able to really express what you think and using that silence that you're left with as a example of consensus. But it really isn't. You just don't want to deal with the shit. Can't say what you want to say anymore. Can't do what you want to do anymore. It's not the era we live in. This isn't some shit like cancel culture. This is, this is deep. This goes to the, the root of it, right? The very soul of it. It's fucking tragic. You know, for years, decades, people have talked about this. I've talked about it, about what was kind of coming. And look where we are. Systems of control implemented almost at every level. Blatantly so, openly so. Yet people like Applebaum, who five, six, seven years ago was talking about how you can't trust hardware companies, Beware the intels, he said. They're putting in backdoors in the hardware for the government. And then the software companies, all working in tandem under the Patriot Act with the government to basically give access behind the scenes to social media companies, which are either coerced or willingly do it. Not all of them, I'm sure, are happy with the decision they've made. You can look at Jack's timeline on Twitter, and you'll see that he's tweeting some very interesting things. But the sad part is, Jack... Once you willingly become a cog in the machine, you can't bitch about the smell of oil. It may offend your nostrils, but you willingly got in place. Now you've got companies like Apple talking about things that sound great at the surface, don't they? We're going to come up with a, an algorithm, a program for your phone to look for child pornography. We're going to make sure if you have it on your phone, we're going to match it to a database through a simple scan and then report you to the police. And who would ever object to that? Nobody likes pedophiles or child predators. It sounds like a great idea. Until you ask yourself, could the government do that? Could the police do that? Wouldn't they need a warrant to do that? But Apple seemingly can just do it because they decide to. And sure, something like that starts with something everything, you know, everyone can agree on. We all think it's bad. We all agree it's bad and something should be done. But does it stop there? When you put a system of control in place, you usually want to make it appeal to people. You want to sell it to them as something that they can agree with, something they would never disagree with. Who could argue against it? But what if it changes? What if they say they want to start looking for other things? Maybe 
you know, conversations you're having. You know, I heard that it was broached as a possible uh, way of dealing with the pandemic to have uh, phone carriers allow SMS messages from the government to dispel misinformation. But you need to ask yourself, one, how would they know what disinformation is being spoken of in text messages through SMS unless they're monitoring them? And why would they need to monitor everybody's text messages to tell you to go get a Fauci ouchie? It's insidious. It's a slow drip. It's how it's always been. And it gets worse and worse. The unfettered internet that existed, this playground for everyone to express themselves and do stupid shit and be silly and awful and uh, amazing to one another, it's gone. It's dead. It's buried. It is not coming back. One, you know, <laughs> it's a fucking graveyard. And you and I and all of us, we're the ghosts haunting it. Unable to let go. God, that's depressing. I know. I know. Nobody likes a black pill. Nobody wants to hear a black pill. But I think you need to understand a few things about this. This is a movie we're watching play out in, you know, in front of us. And I'm a critic, just like you. We're sitting side by side in the same, in the same theater. I'm not the producer. I didn't write the script. Neither did you. All I can do is give my critique. Hope maybe that the sequel is a little bit better, but guaranteed we're sitting in that theater watching this unfold and until those credits roll. We can't escape. It sounds hopeless, doesn't it? But it's not necessarily hopeless. There is one key thing, I think, to remember in the situation we all find ourselves in. And this is apolitical in nature, what I'm telling you here. This isn't a uh, lib thing or a conservative thing. This is a people thing. When systems are put into place to control you, when tyrants, uh, in whatever form they may take, whether that's a oligarchy, a, a technocracy, a government, whatever it is, when they're on top of you, wielding their power, that power which is derived through your fear, they want you to be complacent, and maybe you're forced to be complacent. Maybe you can't speak and say the things you want to say or do and do as you please. But the thing to really take away from it, and to remember in that situation, is to fucking laugh at them. They can't stand it. When you laugh at them, when you mock and you ridicule them, you're spitting in their face, you're sliding them in a way that they can't recover from. It's a wound deeper than a dagger. Because it takes away that precious thing that allows them to enforce that power, which is their fear, the fear they implant in you, to behave. When you laugh at them, it takes that away from them. And they're left looking like assholes. They can't stand it. Why do you think humor was one of the first things that was attacked on the internet? Well, before politics, humor was one of the first things they went after. Because they understand its importance and its power. And that if you laugh at them, you're much freer than they imagine you to be. So please don't mistake this as a a black pill. It's just certainly my assessment of where we are, where the internet is. You know, I remember back when the internet was young, at least from my perspective. I mean, I'm not uh, the oldest of the old. I believe that <laughs> that honor belongs to Gator. But, you know, in my time, YouTube was so much more different than it is now. Social media was so much more different than it is now. You could really say anything, do anything. That censorship that's been instilled in us, that trained behavior, it's bizarre. I think about the videos that I used to watch on YouTube on a daily basis, and if you tried to re-upload any of them, you'd instantly be banned. I think about the jokes people used to say on social media, and if you said them, you'd be instantly banned. Forced to retreat into, into an alternative setting to uh, other websites that try to offer that alternative, but they're so busy trying to stab each other in the back to take, uh, to take the place on top of the, the mountain, I guess. They want to be number one amongst the competition, and so they slit each other's throats. But they're fighting over a molehill. You know, that backstabbing nature hurts them all. Yeah, I wish to see them all succeed. I, I wish they could. Every alternative that pops up, but through one way or another, they just don't seem to be able to get that footing that they need to really 
to really launch themselves, to continue themselves, to fund themselves. That in part is due to the apparatus which exists overhead. I mean, it's it's not really a secret anymore that a lot of things that happen happen behind the scenes, and a lot of the calls that are made are made by financial interests. Companies like Visa and MasterCard pressuring <laughs> pressuring everyone. Banks pressuring people. And so payment processors have to bend the knee. Payment platforms have to bend the knee. And then these alternative sites, how do they fund themselves? And if they do somehow squeak by, someone finds some reason to be upset or angry at them and crushes them into the dirt. And then you're left back here on a YouTube or on a Twitter or on a Facebook with nothing, really. That's a movie we're watching play out. An awful film written by a horrible person. Produced and directed by, I don't know. Ah, allow me to have a cigarette. Nice thing about having cancer is you can't really, I mean, once you got it, right? I mean, fuck, YOLO. Am I right, folks? <laughs> of all the things, when it comes to cancer, you would have thought, oh, he's going to get lung cancer. He smokes so goddamn much. Clean as a whistle in there. Go figure. God's sense of humor. You got you to love it. A little bit of a, a divine laughter, as it were. <laughs>